husband gave permission to open our marriage, then disappeared once I did, leaving me with nothing. Isabella and Mark had been the quintessential high school sweethearts, their love story a tapestry of shared dreams and promises. As they moved through the phases of life together, from the giddy days of youth to the settled routines of married life, the vibrancy that once defined them seemed to dim. They found themselves ensnared in the monotonous rhythm of daily life, their conversations dwindling to mundane exchanges about groceries and bills. One rainy evening, as they sat in their modest living room, the sound of raindrops pattering against the windowpane, Mark broached a subject that caught Isabella off guard. He suggested they consider opening their marriage. The idea, so radical and unexpected, sent a jolt through Isabella. She gazed at Mark, trying to decipher if the man she knew so well was earnest or if this was some ill-conceived joke. Mark's eyes, however, held a seriousness that Isabella had seldom seen. He spoke of feeling trapped, not by their marriage, but by the unyielding nature of monogamy. He talked about exploration, about rediscovering themselves, not just as a couple, but as individuals. It wasn't about finding something lacking in each other, he insisted, but about experiencing life in a broader spectrum. Isabella felt a whirlwind of emotions. There was fear, a tremulous sense of insecurity at the thought of venturing into such unknown territory. There was also a flicker of curiosity, an unacknowledged yearning for something different, something that broke the chains of their current existence. But overriding it all was a deep-seated worry about what this would mean for their future. Could their marriage withstand such a radical change? Was this an escape route for Mark, a way to drift away from her? Over the next few days, Isabella wrestled with her thoughts. She observed Mark, trying to understand his mindset. He seemed more animated than he had in months, talking enthusiastically about the possibilities that lay ahead. Isabella couldn't help but feel a mix of admiration and apprehension at his willingness to embrace such a daring concept. After much contemplation and numerous conversations fraught with vulnerability and honesty, Isabella consented. She agreed to the idea of an open marriage, not entirely convinced but propelled by a combination of trust in Mark and a secret desire for a change in her own life. She rationalized that perhaps this was the jolt their relationship needed, a way to reignite the passion that once defined them. The decision was made with a mix of trepidation and excitement. They set ground rules, talked about boundaries, and emphasized the need for absolute transparency. It was a pact sealed with a mixture of hope and uncertainty, a leap into a realm that was as thrilling as it was frightening. As they embarked on this unconventional journey, Isabella couldn't shake off a nagging feeling at the back of her mind. She wondered if this was the key to rekindling their love or the beginning of a path that would lead them in entirely different directions. Unbeknownst to her, this decision would unravel their lives in ways she could never have imagined. The decision to open their marriage marked the beginning of a journey neither Isabella nor Mark could have fully anticipated. Isabella, once apprehensive, found herself gradually embracing this newfound freedom. It was like stepping into a world that was at once exhilarating and daunting. Her first foray into this open arrangement was cautious, filled with a mix of curiosity and nervousness. She created an online profile on a dating site for people in open relationships, her fingers hesitating as she typed out a description of herself and what she was looking for. It felt surreal, this act of seeking connection outside her marriage, but it also sparked a sense of adventure that she hadn't felt in years. As messages began to trickle in, Isabella experienced a rush of excitement. There were compliments, flirty exchanges, and invitations to meet. She was surprised at how much attention she received and how it made her feel desirable in a way she hadn't felt in a long time. 
It wasn't just about physical attraction, it was the thrill of being seen and appreciated as an individual, not just as Mark's wife. Meanwhile, Mark also delved into his own explorations. He seemed more at ease with the arrangement, perhaps having contemplated it longer. Yet, as he went on dates, he remained somewhat distant about his experiences, sharing only the surface details with Isabella. He encouraged her to enjoy her journey but was less forthcoming about his own, creating an unspoken barrier between them. Isabella's first actual date was with a man named Alex, who was also in an open marriage. They met at a cozy café, and the initial awkwardness soon gave way to a comfortable conversation. Alex was a good listener, and Isabella found herself opening up about her life, her marriage, and her hopes for this new phase. The date ended with a friendly hug and a promise to keep in touch. As weeks turned into months, Isabella found herself more immersed in this lifestyle. She met a few more people, some leading to brief romances, others just remaining as pleasant acquaintances. Each encounter taught her something new about herself, her desires, and her boundaries. Isabella noticed changes in herself. She felt more confident, more vibrant. She also realized that she was learning to compartmentalize her life, her time with Mark and her time exploring other relationships. This duality was confusing yet intriguing. Mark and Isabella's relationship, meanwhile, began to shift in subtle ways. They still shared a home and a life, but their conversations often skirted around the depth of their individual experiences outside the marriage. There was an unspoken understanding, a respect for each other's privacy, yet it also created a distance that hadn't been there before. One evening, as Isabella returned home from a date, she found Mark sitting in the living room, lost in thought. She sensed a certain pensiveness in his demeanor, a contrast to his usual easygoing nature. When she asked if everything was all right, he simply smiled and assured her it was. But his smile didn't reach his eyes, and Isabella felt a pang of concern. As they went to bed that night, Isabella lay awake, pondering the complexities of their relationship. She wondered if this path they had chosen was bringing them closer or leading them down a road of quiet estrangement. The excitement of new experiences was undeniable, but the shifting dynamics of her marriage to Mark left her with a growing sense of unease. As the autumn leaves began to turn, Isabella's life, too, underwent a transformation that was both unexpected and bewildering. Mark, who had once been her constant, her anchor, began to drift away in a manner that was both subtle and alarming. His absences, once just for an evening or a weekend, stretched longer, his explanations more vague and his return less certain. Isabella's unease grew as days turned into weeks with Mark becoming increasingly distant. Then, one ordinary Wednesday, Mark left for a supposed business trip, a suitcase in hand and a peck on her cheek. However, as the hours turned into days and then weeks, with no word from him, a sinking realization dawned on Isabella Mark was not coming back. Panic set in as she tried to reach him, her calls unanswered, her messages floating in the digital void. His social media profiles were deactivated, and his colleagues mentioned he had taken an indefinite leave. Isabella felt a chill run down her spine. It was as if Mark had vanished into thin air. The true extent of Mark's disappearance became painfully clear when Isabella received a call from the bank. The joint accounts were emptied, investments liquidated, and the mortgage had gone unpaid for months. Mark had meticulously planned his exit, leaving a trail of financial ruin in his wake. Isabella was aghast. Betrayal wasn't a strong enough word to describe the chasm that had opened up in her life. The man she had loved and trusted, the partner she had agreed to explore the boundaries of marriage with, had left her with nothing. The open marriage, it seemed 
was a diversion, a ploy to distract while he orchestrated his escape. The house, once a symbol of their life together, now felt like a hollow shell. Isabella wandered through the rooms, each corner a reminder of the life she thought she had. The photographs on the walls mocked her with happier times, the empty closet echoed with a silence that was deafening. With limited options, Isabella sought legal counsel, only to be told that recovering her losses would be difficult. Mark had covered his tracks well, and without knowing his whereabouts, legal action was a distant possibility. Isabella's emotions oscillated between anger, grief, and disbelief. How could the man she had shared her life with, the man she had embarked on this open marriage journey with, just disappear? Was this his plan all along? Had she been just a pawn in his game? The community she had built in her open relationship experiences became a source of unexpected support. Friends, old and new, rallied around her, offering emotional support and practical help. But even in the midst of this kindness, Isabella felt a profound loneliness. The betrayal had left a void that was hard to fill. As she lay awake at night, staring at the ceiling, Isabella realized that this was more than just the end of her marriage. It was the shattering of trust, the realization that the person she thought she knew was a stranger. The open marriage, which had started as a journey of exploration, had ended in a labyrinth of deceit. Isabella knew she had to rebuild her life, but the path forward was murky. The future, once filled with possibilities, now seemed daunting. As she grappled with the remnants of her broken life, she knew one thing for certain, the journey ahead would be hers alone. The stark reality of Mark's betrayal and the resulting financial ruin hit Isabella like a relentless storm. The once warm and inviting home they shared now felt like a prison of memories and lost dreams. She spent her days sifting through paperwork, trying to make sense of their finances, only to find more debts and deception. Isabella felt overwhelmed by the magnitude of her situation. Not only was she grappling with the emotional turmoil of abandonment, but she also faced the daunting task of financial survival. The house, once a symbol of their shared life, now loomed over her as a burden too heavy to bear. The threat of foreclosure was real, and with limited savings, Isabella knew she had to act fast. She began to sell off whatever she could furniture, electronics, even some of her cherished belongings. Each item sold felt like a piece of her old life slipping away, but necessity overruled sentimentality. She started looking for jobs, ready to take up any work that would help her keep afloat. Her days were filled with job applications, interviews, and the relentless pursuit of stability. As she delved into this new reality, Isabella's emotions were a whirlwind. Anger at Mark for his deceit was predominant, but there were also moments of self-doubt and guilt. Had she been too naive? Did she ignore the warning signs? The questions haunted her, but she knew dwelling on them wouldn't change her situation. The support from her friends, particularly those she met during her open relationship experiences, was a lifeline. They offered not just sympathy, but practical help from assisting with job searches to providing legal advice. Isabella realized that her journey in the open marriage had given her more than just experiences, it had given her a community. Isabella's relationship with her own identity evolved as well. The experience of being independent in her romantic life had initially been liberating, but now it took on a new meaning. It was no longer just about exploring her desires, it was about survival, resilience, and the strength to rebuild her life from scratch. As the days turned into weeks, Isabella started to see small victories. She secured a part-time job at a local bookstore, a place that offered not just income, but a refuge from her troubles. The job was a far cry from the comfortable life she once knew, 
but it brought a sense of accomplishment and normalcy. In the quiet moments of the night, Isabella often reflected on her marriage with Mark. She thought about the love they shared, the dreams they built, and how it all came crashing down. The journey they embarked on together, which was supposed to bring them closer, had instead torn them apart. But amid the chaos, Isabella found moments of clarity and empowerment. She was learning to rely on herself, to make decisions that were best for her. The vulnerability of her situation was frightening, but it also brought a sense of liberation. She was no longer bound by Mark's choices, her path was her own to carve. Isabella stands at the crossroads of her life. The future is uncertain, the path ahead filled with challenges, but there is a spark of hope. Amidst the ruins of her old life, she begins to lay the foundation for a new beginning, one that is defined by her strength, resilience, and the courage to move forward. Months had passed since Mark's departure, and the initial shock and despair had gradually given way to a determined resolve within Isabella. She had faced her darkest moments, confronted her fears, and now stood ready to forge a new path. Isabella's life had taken on a rhythm of its own, a blend of work, self-care, and rebuilding connections. The job at the bookstore, which had started as a mere means to an end, had become a source of joy and fulfillment. Surrounded by books, she found wisdom and escape, and in the regular customers, a sense of community. Financial stability was still a distant goal, but Isabella had managed to stave off the immediate crises. She learned to live within her means, finding simplicity and contentment in things she once overlooked. The small apartment she had moved into was sparse but suffused with a sense of peace and autonomy. Emotionally, the journey was more complex. Isabella had days when the weight of loneliness and betrayal felt crushing. Yet, there were also moments of profound self-discovery. She realized that her identity was not anchored to her relationship with Mark but was a tapestry of her experiences, beliefs, and dreams. She began to appreciate her own resilience, the strength that carried her through the storm. The open relationship experiences, once a source of trepidation, now offered valuable lessons. Isabella understood the importance of boundaries, communication, and most importantly, self-respect. These encounters had shown her the spectrum of human connections, and she emerged wiser, more discerning in her relationships. Isabella also reconnected with old friends, mending bridges that had weakened during her marriage. These rekindled friendships brought a sense of belonging and support, reminding her that she was not alone in her journey. One significant change was her approach to love and relationships. The idea of romance had transformed for Isabella. She no longer sought validation or completion from others. Instead, she sought connections that were enriching, respectful, and honest. She learned to enjoy her own company, finding joy in solitude as much as in companionship. In her moments of reflection, Isabella often thought of Mark. The anger and betrayal had faded into a dull ache, a chapter of her life that was closed but not forgotten. She wondered about his fate, but these thoughts no longer consumed her. Mark had been a part of her story, but he was not the entirety of it. As the chapter draws to a close, we find Isabella in a moment of quiet contemplation. She stands at her apartment window, gazing out at the city that had witnessed her lowest and her rising. The journey had been arduous, filled with unexpected turns, but it had led her to a place of self-acceptance and hope. The story of Isabella is not one of a fairy tale ending but of real-life resilience. It is a testament to the strength of the human spirit, the ability to rise from the ashes of despair and rebuild a life marked by dignity and grace. As she turns from the window, a subtle smile graces her lips, a symbol of her newfound peace and optimism for the future.
Her story, a blend of pain, growth, and triumph, is a reminder that even in our darkest times, there is always a path forward, illuminated by the light of our inner strength. I proposed the idea of an open marriage to my wife, but now I regret it as she has developed strong feelings for her new partner. I am now pleading with her to return to a monogamous relationship with me. In the dim light of their suburban living room, Logan watched as Layla flicked through a magazine, her face illuminated by the soft glow of the table lamp. It had been like this for months, quiet evenings, filled more with silence than conversation. The familiarity of their routine was comforting, but to Logan, it also felt like a silent alarm, signaling a passion that had dimmed. Hey, Layla, Logan started, his voice breaking the silence. She looked up, her brown eyes meeting his with a mixture of curiosity and mild concern. I've been thinking, maybe we need something to, spice things up. You know, in our marriage. Layla's eyebrows rose slightly, spice things up. How do you mean? He took a deep breath, the words he'd rehearsed in his mind suddenly feeling heavier on his tongue. What about an open marriage? It might bring back some excitement, a sense of adventure. Layla set her magazine down, her expression a complex tapestry of surprise and contemplation. An open marriage, she repeated, as if tasting the words for the first time. Isn't that a bit extreme? Logan hastened to explain, it's just. I think we're in a rut. We love each other, yes, but don't you feel like we're missing something? Some, passion. Layla looked away, her gaze settling on the framed photograph from their honeymoon in Bali. The memory of that time, so full of love and promise, seemed to hang in the air between them. I just don't know, Logan. It's a big step. And what if it changes things between us? But that's the point, isn't it? To change things for the better, Logan insisted, reaching for her hand. We set rules, boundaries. It doesn't change how we feel about each other. It's just, exploring. Layla's hand remained in his, her thoughts visibly churning. And you think this will make us happier? There was a hint of skepticism in her voice, yet also a trace of curiosity. I do, Logan said with a confidence he didn't fully feel. It's worth a try, isn't it? To find that spark again. The conversation lingered into the night, with Logan gently nudging and Layla cautiously considering. They discussed hypotheticals and boundaries, their words treading a delicate dance around fears and uncertainties. Finally, as the clock neared midnight, Layla nodded slowly, her voice soft but resolute. Okay, we can try it. But we have to promise each other, this won't change us. We're still us. Logan felt a surge of excitement, mixed with an unspoken apprehension. He squeezed her hand, a silent vow in the gesture. Of course. We're always us. As they went to bed that night, Logan couldn't shake a nagging sensation, like a tiny crack had formed in something once whole. He pushed the thought away, focusing instead on the thrill of the unknown. This was a new beginning, he told himself. A journey to rediscover the passion they once had. But as Layla drifted to sleep beside him, her breathing soft and even, Logan lay awake, the weight of their decision pressing down on him in the stillness of the night. The weeks that followed Logan's proposal were a whirlwind of emotions and new experiences. Both he and Layla ventured into their agreed-upon open marriage with cautious optimism. Logan threw himself into this new arrangement with an enthusiasm that was at once exhilarating and unsettling. Layla, more reserved at first, slowly began to embrace the change. Logan met people, went on dates, but these encounters felt fleeting and superficial. He was chasing a thrill, but each encounter left him feeling more hollow than the last. The conversations were pleasant, the excitement palpable, but as he lay in bed at night, Logan's mind invariably drifted back to Layla. Layla's journey was markedly different. After several hesitant coffee dates, she met Nathan. He was an artist, his life a stark contrast to the structured routine she shared with Logan. Nathan was passionate about his work, and his zeal for life was infectious. 
Layla found herself drawn to him, his world so different from the one she knew. Their connection was undeniable. Layla, who had always been more introverted, found in Nathan someone who listened intently, who made her laugh and think in ways she hadn't in years. Their conversations meandered through topics of art, life, and dreams, a stark contrast to the pragmatic discussions she had with Logan. Logan noticed the change in Layla. She seemed more alive, her eyes holding a spark that had been missing. At first, he was happy for her, this was what he had wanted, wasn't it? To bring back that spark. But as Layla spent more evenings out with Nathan, a sinking feeling began to take root in Logan's heart. One evening, as Logan sat alone in their living room, he tried to recall the last time Layla had looked at him the way she now spoke of Nathan. He missed the way her eyes lit up in laughter at his jokes, how she'd lean in close to share a secret. Now, their conversations were perfunctory, logistical, discussing who would be out when, and what plans they had made with others. As he flipped through the channels on the television, the noise failed to drown out the silence of the house. Logan's mind wandered to Layla, imagining her with Nathan, laughing, sharing moments that used to be theirs. He felt a pang of jealousy, an emotion he hadn't anticipated in this arrangement. One night, Layla returned home later than usual. Her cheeks were flushed, and there was a lightness in her step that Logan hadn't seen in a long time. She shared stories about her evening with Nathan, her voice animated and eyes bright. Logan listened, a tight smile on his face, his heart sinking with every word. The realization hit Logan hard and unexpectedly. The open marriage, which he had thought would rekindle their passion, was pushing them further apart. Layla, who he had feared losing to routine and familiarity, was now drifting away, caught up in a world he had encouraged her to explore. As he lay in bed that night, Logan turned towards Layla, watching her sleep peacefully. He wondered if she too felt the growing chasm between them or if she was simply lost in the newfound excitement that Nathan brought into her life. Logan closed his eyes, the unease in his heart growing stronger. What had started as an adventure was quickly turning into a journey of unexpected revelations and deepening regret. Months passed, and the dynamics of Logan and Layla's relationship continued to evolve, each day stretching the gap between them a little further. Logan, who had initiated the open marriage, found himself retreating from it. The novelty of new encounters had quickly worn off, leaving him feeling empty and increasingly isolated. Layla, on the other hand, was thriving. Her relationship with Nathan had deepened, becoming something far more significant than she had ever anticipated. They shared interests, passions, and a level of understanding that Layla hadn't realized she was missing. With Nathan, she felt a sense of freedom and fulfillment that had slowly faded from her marriage. Logan noticed the changes in Layla, subtle at first, but increasingly pronounced as time went on. She was more vibrant, often lost in thought or smiling to herself. Her nights out with Nathan became more frequent, and she often spoke of him with a fondness that made Logan's heart clench. One evening, as Logan sat alone in their living room, he reflected on the growing distance between them. The room, once filled with laughter and shared memories, now felt like a silent testament to their drifting paths Logan missed her, the real her, not just the physical presence but the emotional connection they once shared. He decided to confront Layla, hoping to bridge the widening gap between them. When she returned home that night, Logan was waiting, his expression a mixture of apprehension and hope. Layla, we need to talk, he began, his voice unsteady. Layla's smile faded as she sensed the seriousness in his tone. Logan, what's wrong, she asked, sitting down beside him. It's about, this arrangement, Logan hesitated. I feel like we're losing each other. You and Nathan, it's becoming something more, isn't it? Layla's expression softened, her eyes reflecting a mix of guilt and resolve. Logan, I. Nathan and I have grown close. Closer than I expected. But that doesn't change what we have. But it does, Layla. It does change things, Logan's voice cracked with emotion. I thought this would help us, but I feel like I'm just pushing you further away. 
I miss you, Layla. I miss us. Layla reached for his hand, her touch gentle. I miss us too, Logan. But with Nathan, I've found something, different. It's not better or worse, just different. And I can't ignore that. The conversation stretched into the night, with Logan expressing his fears and Layla sharing her feelings. It was clear that their paths were diverging, yet neither knew how to navigate this new reality. Logan proposed ending the open marriage, but Layla was torn, unable to let go of what she had found with Nathan. As they went to bed that night, the distance between them felt more profound than ever. Logan lay awake, staring at the ceiling, his mind racing with thoughts of Layla and Nathan. He realized that in his quest to rediscover passion, he had inadvertently set in motion the unraveling of the very thing he cherished most. Layla, meanwhile, lay beside him, torn between the life she had with Logan and the new world she had discovered with Nathan. The night was quiet, but their hearts were tumultuous, each lost in their own sea of emotions and uncertainties. The shift in their relationship was undeniable, and the future uncertain, as they drifted further into uncharted waters. The air in the house felt thick with unspoken words as Logan and Layla moved around each other, each caught in a whirlpool of emotions. Logan, once the advocate of this new arrangement, was now grappling with a profound sense of loss and desperation. Layla, increasingly distant, was torn between her loyalty to Logan and her deepening feelings for Nathan. One chilly evening, Logan couldn't bear the silence and the growing chasm between them any longer. He had to confront the situation, to fight for what was slipping away. He waited for Layla in the living room, his heart pounding with a mix of fear and resolve. When Layla walked in, she sensed immediately that something was amiss. Logan's posture, rigid and expectant, spoke volumes. She sat down, bracing herself for the conversation she knew was coming. Logan, what's on your mind? Layla asked, her voice a cautious whisper. Us, Logan said bluntly. This isn't working, Layla. I can't keep pretending that everything is fine when it's not. I feel like I'm losing you to Nathan, and it's tearing me apart. Layla's eyes met his, filled with a sorrow that mirrored his own. Logan, I... I didn't expect things to turn out this way. With Nathan, I found something I didn't even realize I was looking for. But that doesn't mean I don't care about you. But do you still love me, Layla? Or have I lost you already? Logan's voice broke, revealing the depth of his pain. Layla hesitated, her heart aching at the sight of his anguish. I do love you, Logan. But my feelings for Nathan, they're different. Strong in a way I can't ignore. Logan's face crumpled, his worst fears confirmed. He stood up, pacing the room, his mind racing. Then let's end this open marriage. Let's go back to how things were. We can fix this, Layla. We can try. Layla watched him, torn between the life she had built with Logan and the new path unfolding before her with Nathan. Logan, I'm not sure if we can just go back. Things have changed, I've changed. I can't just turn off my feelings for Nathan. But I thought this was just about exploring, about finding some excitement, Logan said, his voice tinged with desperation. I never thought I'd lose you in the process. I didn't either, Logan. But we can't undo what's happened. We can't unfeel what we feel, Layla replied, her voice trembling. The conversation stretched on, with Logan pleading and Layla struggling to articulate her torn emotions. In the end, they went to bed with a chasm wider than ever between them. Logan lay awake, staring at the shadows dancing on the ceiling, realizing that his attempt to rekindle their love had instead set it ablaze, burning it down to ashes. Layla, too, lay awake, her mind a battlefield. She was caught between the comfort and history she shared with Logan and the exhilarating yet frightening new love she found in Nathan. The night was long and sleepless, filled with the heavy realization that their lives were at a crossroads, with no clear path forward. The morning light filtered through the curtains, casting a soft glow on the room where Logan lay awake. The events of the previous night hung heavily in the air, 
a tangible reminder of the pain and confusion that had become their daily reality. He turned to look at Layla, who was still asleep, her face serene yet distant even in slumber. Logan rose quietly, his movements mechanical, as if in a daze. The house felt different now, every corner a reminder of a life that was slowly slipping away from him. He made coffee, the routine offering no comfort, only a stark reminder of the normalcy that was no longer theirs. When Layla finally awoke and joined him in the kitchen, the air was thick with unspoken words. She poured herself a cup of coffee, her hands trembling slightly. They sat at the table, the silence between them a chasm that seemed impossible to bridge. Logan, Layla began, her voice barely above a whisper. I've made a decision. I think it's best if, if I leave. Her words hit Logan like a physical blow. He had known, somewhere deep down, that this moment might come, but the reality of it was crushing. Leave, he echoed, his voice hollow. You mean, leave me? Layla nodded, tears brimming in her eyes. I can't keep living like this, torn between two lives. I need to be honest with myself, and with you. My feelings for Nathan, they're too strong. I can't ignore them any longer. Logan felt a surge of emotions, anger, sorrow, disbelief. But beneath it all was an overwhelming sense of loss. So, this is it, then? Our marriage, our life together, it all ends because of this, experiment. I'm so sorry, Logan, Layla said, her voice breaking. I never wanted to hurt you. This open marriage was supposed to bring us closer, but it only showed me what I was missing. I wish things were different. Logan looked at her, really looked at her, seeing not just the woman he loved but also the stranger she had become. I wish I had never suggested it, he said, the regret in his voice palpable. I thought I was saving us, but I was just pushing you away. They talked for hours, rehashing decisions, expressing regrets, and shedding tears for a love that had once seemed unbreakable. When Layla finally packed her bags, the finality of the moment was overwhelming. As Logan watched her drive away, he felt a part of himself leave with her. The house, once filled with laughter and love, now stood empty, a shell of the life they had built together. He sat down on the steps, his mind replaying the memories, the good times, and the bad, all leading to this moment of irrevocable loss. In the days that followed, Logan tried to come to terms with his new reality. The pain of Layla's absence was a constant companion, a reminder of the risk they had taken and the price they had paid. He realized that in his quest for excitement, he had lost sight of what truly mattered. But it was too late now. Layla was gone, her departure leaving a void that no one else could fill. The story of Logan and Layla ended not with anger or betrayal, but with a profound sense of regret. A tale of love lost, not to time or circumstance, but to a gamble that had gone terribly wrong. Logan was left to pick up the pieces, to find a way to move forward in a world that no longer had Layla in it. It was a bitter end, a lesson learned in the harshest way possible. I asked my best friend to engage in an affair with my wife as part of a plan to access her finances. However, he ended up taking the money and remaining with my wife instead. In the dim light of the old, oak-paneled study, Daniel sat contemplating his next move. His fingers drummed a steady rhythm on the mahogany desk, a telltale sign of his restless mind at work. Across from him, lounged Luke, his childhood friend and confidant, whose easygoing demeanor contrasted starkly with Daniel's intense gaze. Look, it's simple, Daniel began, his voice low and persuasive. Scarlet's hiding something, Luke. I've seen the signs. Secret phone calls, unexplained bank statements. I'm telling you, she's got a stash of cash somewhere, and I intend to find out where. Luke raised an eyebrow, skeptical. And what do you want from me, he asked, swirling the amber liquid in his glass. Daniel leaned forward, his eyes glinting with a cunning plan. I need you to get close to Scarlet. Charm her, seduce her if you must. I need someone on the inside to find out what she's hiding. Luke set his glass down, 
the seriousness of the request dawning on him. Daniel, she's your wife. Isn't this a bit extreme? Extreme times call for extreme measures, Daniel retorted sharply. Besides, it's not like I haven't noticed how you look at her. This could be your chance, and you'd be helping me in the process. The room fell into a tense silence. Luke's mind raced with the moral implications of what was being asked of him. He had known Scarlet for as long as he had known Daniel. They had all grown up together in this sleepy town, their lives intertwining like the ivy on the old brick walls of their school. But the look in Daniel's eyes was one he had seen many times before. It was the look of a man desperate and determined, a dangerous combination. Finally, Luke sighed, his shoulders slumping in defeat. Fine, I'll do it. But not for the reasons you think. I'm doing this because I care about Scarlet, and if there's something she's hiding, maybe she needs help, not a spy. Daniel's lips curled into a satisfied smile. Excellent. Just remember, I need evidence. Bank statements, passwords, anything you can get your hands on. As Luke stood up to leave, he couldn't shake the feeling of unease that settled in the pit of his stomach. He glanced back at Daniel, who was already lost in thought, plotting his next move in the high-stakes game he had just set in motion. Outside, the night air was cool and crisp, a stark contrast to the stifling atmosphere of the study. Luke took a deep breath, trying to dispel the guilt that gnawed at him. He had just agreed to betray a friend, a woman he had known and respected for years. But as he walked away, the image of Scarlet's smile, warm and unsuspecting, haunted him. What had he just gotten himself into? The night stretched on, and the once quiet streets of their town seemed to whisper secrets in the shadows. Secrets that Luke was now a part of, whether he liked it or not. The days that followed were a blur of calculated encounters and clandestine meetings. Luke, who had once been a frequent and welcome guest in Daniel and Scarlet's home, now felt like an intruder, stepping into a world he had no right to disturb. But his resolve, fueled by Daniel's insistence and his own growing curiosity, pushed him forward. Scarlet, ever graceful and unsuspecting, welcomed Luke with open arms, oblivious to the storm brewing beneath the surface. Their conversations, once filled with laughter and reminiscences of shared childhood memories, now had an undercurrent of tension, at least on Luke's part. As he spent more time with Scarlet, Luke found himself increasingly torn. She was not the cunning schemer Daniel had made her out to be. Instead, he saw a woman of depth and kindness, someone caught in the web of Daniel's unfounded suspicions. Her laughter, her genuine interest in his life, her subtle vulnerabilities, they all made Luke question the morality of his actions. One evening, as they sat in the lush garden under the starlit sky, Scarlet's tone shifted to something more somber. You know, Luke, I've always considered you a true friend, not just Daniel's, she said, her eyes reflecting the moonlight. But lately, I feel like you're holding something back. Is everything okay? Luke's heart raced. This was his chance to come clean, to abandon the deceit. But the words of confession froze in his throat. Instead, he masked his guilt with a smile. Everything's fine, Scarlet. Just some work stress, I guess. Scarlet nodded, though her eyes held a glint of unconvinced concern. She reached out, placing a gentle hand on his. If there's ever anything you need, I'm here, she said earnestly. That touch, innocent and comforting, sparked a realization in Luke. He saw Scarlet not as a target but as a person, a friend who was being wronged by the very people she trusted. He withdrew his hand, the weight of his betrayal heavier than ever. The next day, Luke confronted Daniel. I can't do this anymore, he declared, his voice firm. Scarlet isn't hiding anything. This is wrong, Daniel, and I won't be a part of it. Daniel's reaction was swift and cold. You're in too deep to back out now, Luke. Remember, you agreed to this. You owe me. The words hung heavy between them, a reminder of the pact that had entangled their lives in a web of deceit. 
But as Luke left Daniel's presence, a plan began to form in his mind. A plan not to uncover Scarlet's non-existent secrets, but to protect her from the man who had been his friend. He would play along with Daniel's game, but on his terms. That night, under the guise of yet another friendly visit, Luke sat down with Scarlet. With a heavy heart, he began to weave a story, a fictitious tale of financial troubles and fake bank accounts. It was a risky move, but if it could keep Daniel at bay and protect Scarlet, it was a risk he was willing to take. As the story unfolded, Scarlet listened, her expression one of disbelief and concern. Luke could only hope that his plan would work, that he could shield her from the storm that was about to break. Daniel's patience was wearing thin. The once clear-cut plan he had devised was now muddled with delays and excuses. Each day that passed without concrete evidence against Scarlet added to his frustration. He couldn't understand why Luke, who had always been reliable, was suddenly faltering in his resolve. On a particularly overcast afternoon, Daniel decided to confront Luke. He found him in his apartment, a space that once echoed with the camaraderie of their friendship but now seemed cold and distant. What's going on, Luke? It's been weeks, and you've given me nothing substantial, Daniel demanded, his voice laced with suspicion. Luke, who had been expecting this confrontation, maintained his composure. I'm doing what I can, Daniel. Scarlet isn't easy to crack. She's more cautious than you think. Unconvinced, Daniel paced the room, his mind racing with doubts and conjectures. It was then that he noticed Luke's laptop, left carelessly open on the coffee table. Acting on a hunch, Daniel quickly glanced over the screen. His eyes widened as he saw an email draft addressed to Scarlet. The message detailed their entire plan, exposing his intentions and warning Scarlet of his deceit. Enraged, Daniel confronted Luke. You traitor. You were planning to tell her everything. Luke, caught off guard, tried to explain, but his words fell on deaf ears. Daniel, consumed by a sense of betrayal, saw this as the ultimate act of treachery. In a fit of anger, he stormed out, leaving Luke to grapple with the aftermath of his discovery. The following days were tense. Daniel's trust in Luke had been shattered, and with it, their plan. He began to surveil Scarlet himself, convinced that both she and Luke were plotting against him. He followed her to work, eavesdropped on her phone conversations, and scoured her personal belongings for any hint of hidden wealth. However, Scarlet seemed oblivious to his suspicions. She continued her routine, unaware of the invisible eyes that tracked her every move. Daniel's obsession with unveiling her secret consumed him, blinding him to the reality of their crumbling marriage. One evening, as he sifted through Scarlet's documents, he found a bank statement that caught his eye. It showed a substantial withdrawal made weeks ago. His heart raced as he pieced together the puzzle. This had to be the proof he was looking for. Armed with the bank statement, Daniel confronted Scarlet. He accused her of hiding assets and demanded an explanation. Scarlet, shocked and hurt by the accusation, denied any wrongdoing. The argument escalated, with accusations and hurtful words exchanged. In the heat of the moment, Scarlet admitted to the withdrawal but explained it was for a surprise she had been planning for their anniversary. She had wanted to book a vacation, a desperate attempt to rekindle the love that once defined their marriage. Daniel, faced with the truth, felt a wave of guilt and confusion wash over him. His quest for hidden wealth had blinded him to the simple truths of their life together. But his pride and suspicion wouldn't allow him to accept his mistake. The confrontation ended with Scarlet in tears and Daniel more determined than ever to prove his suspicions. The rift between them grew wider, a chasm filled with mistrust and broken promises. As Daniel lay awake that night, the realization of his actions began to dawn on him. He had set in motion a series of events that threatened to destroy everything he held dear. But it was a realization that came too late, for the seeds of doubt and betrayal had already been sown. The days following the confrontation were marked by a chilling silence in the once warm and lively home of Daniel and Scarlet. Daniel's Obsession with Proving 
Scarlet's alleged deceit had turned into a relentless quest, consuming every waking moment of his life. Daniel's behavior grew increasingly erratic. He spent hours reviewing bank statements, following Scarlet's every move, and searching through her personal belongings when she was away. His once successful career began to suffer as he neglected his responsibilities, his thoughts fixated solely on unearthing the truth he believed was hidden from him. Luke, who had been watching this downward spiral from a distance, felt a growing sense of responsibility for the chaos he had helped unleash. He tried to reach out to Daniel, to reason with him, but Daniel's distrust and anger had erected an impenetrable barrier between the two old friends. Scarlet, for her part, became a shell of her former self. The constant accusations and lack of trust had taken a toll on her. She moved through her days like a ghost, her vibrant spirit dimmed by the dark cloud hanging over their marriage. As Daniel's life unraveled, he began to lose more than just his sanity. His professional reputation suffered, leading to a demotion at work. His friends, once a tight-knit circle, distanced themselves, unwilling to be associated with his increasingly paranoid behavior. The tipping point came one evening when Daniel, convinced he had finally found the conclusive evidence he needed, staged a dramatic confrontation. He accused Scarlet of having an affair with Luke and hiding assets to leave him penniless. The accusation was baseless, a product of his warped mind, but it was the final straw for Scarlet. She could no longer live under the same roof with a man who saw her as nothing more than a deceitful adversary. She left that night, taking only a few personal belongings. Daniel's world, already teetering on the edge, crumbled. He had lost the woman he once loved, his best friend, and the life he had built. But instead of introspection, he delved deeper into his obsession, convinced that his downfall was the result of a grand conspiracy orchestrated by Scarlet and Luke. His home became a fortress of solitude, walls lined with photos and documents, strings connecting different pieces of evidence, in a chaotic web. Daniel's once sharp mind was now lost in a maze of suspicion and conspiracy theories. Meanwhile, Luke watched in despair as his friend's life fell apart. Guilt gnawed at him for his role in this tragedy. He had tried to protect Scarlet, but in doing so, he had inadvertently pushed Daniel over the edge. In a last-ditch effort to save his friend from total ruin, Luke reached out to Daniel's family, hoping they could intervene. But when they arrived, they found a man who was a shadow of his former self, lost in a world of his own making. As they tried to coax him back to reality, Daniel railed against them, accusing them of being part of the conspiracy. It was then that the heartbreaking truth became clear, Daniel had lost not only his marriage and his friend but also his grip on reality. The chapter closes with Daniel sitting alone in his study, surrounded by the chaos of his obsession, a tragic figure consumed by his own unfounded suspicions. The once vibrant life Daniel had led now lay in ruins, a casualty of his own unchecked suspicions and relentless pursuit of a truth that never existed. The walls of his study, plastered with convoluted charts and photographs connected by red strings, served as a testament to his descent into madness. His professional life had deteriorated beyond repair. He had been forced to take an indefinite leave from his job after a series of incidents where his paranoia spilled over into confrontations with colleagues. Friends, once a constant presence, had retreated, unwilling to engage with the shell of the man Daniel had become. Scarlet, who had found refuge in a friend's home, filed for divorce. The proceedings were quick, as Daniel showed little interest in contesting anything. His obsession had eclipsed even the remnants of his love for her. She walked away with a heavy heart, mourning the loss of the man she once loved, now a stranger consumed by delusions. Luke, carrying the burden of guilt, watched from a distance. He had hoped that Scarlet's departure might jolt Daniel back to reality, but it only seemed to push him further into the abyss. Luke's attempts to reach out were met with hostility and accusations. The bond they once shared, strong and unyielding, was now irreparably broken. As the divorce was finalized, Daniel became a recluse, his world confined to the four walls of his home. He spent his days and nights scouring through his evidence, trying to piece together a conspiracy that existed only in his mind. 
One evening, as a storm raged outside, Daniel sat in his study, the glow of his desk lamp casting long shadows. The room was silent except for the rustle of papers and the occasional murmur of his voice, articulating connections only he could understand. The phone rang, shattering the silence. It was a call from his brother, the first in many weeks. His brother's voice, laced with concern, offered a lifeline back to reality. He spoke of family, of the help available, of a chance to start anew. But Daniel, trapped in his delusional world, dismissed the offer, declaring that he was close to uncovering the truth. After the call, Daniel's gaze returned to the chaotic web on the wall. His eyes, once bright with intelligence, now reflected a haunting emptiness. The pursuit of a non-existent truth had cost him everything, his wife, his friend, his career, and now, his sanity. The chapter closes on a poignant note, with Daniel alone in his study, the storm outside mirroring the turmoil within. The man who had once had everything, a loving wife, a successful career, a loyal friend, had lost it all to an obsession born of unfounded jealousy and paranoia. In the final lines, Daniel is seen reaching out to touch the web of photos and strings, a solitary figure lost in a world of his own making. The story of his life, once filled with promise and joy, had ended in desolation, a powerful reminder of the destructive power of unchecked suspicion and the fragility of the human mind. My husband was unfaithful with my sister, leading me to take all the money and evict him from our house. He now regrets his infidelity. The situation escalates into a public scandal, significantly damaging his reputation and career. Consequently, he suffers the loss of not only his finances and residence but also his social status. The morning sun cast a gentle glow across the kitchen, where Rosa sat sipping her coffee. It was a quiet, ordinary morning, or so it seemed. As she scrolled through her tablet, an email notification caught her eye. It was from an unknown sender, but the subject line, about Samuel, prompted an uneasy curiosity. With a hesitant tap, Rosa opened the email. It contained a series of photos and messages, evidence of an affair that was both undeniable and unimaginable. The images showed her husband, Samuel, intimately entangled with another woman. The shock hit her like a physical blow, but what twisted the knife deeper was the realization of who the other woman was, her own sister. Rosa felt a mix of nausea and rage as she tried to process the betrayal. She had trusted Samuel implicitly, their marriage a seemingly unshakable foundation in her life. And her sister, her confidant since childhood, how could she? When Samuel walked in, his cheerful good morning halted abruptly as he saw Rosa's tear-streaked face and the open email on the tablet. His expression morphed from confusion to dread within seconds. Rosa, what's wrong? he asked, approaching cautiously. She couldn't speak. Instead, she pushed the tablet towards him. Watching his face fall was a small, bitter satisfaction but it did nothing to quell the storm of emotions raging inside her. Samuel stammered, a jumble of excuses and apologies spilling from him. Rosa, I, it was a mistake. I never meant to hurt you. It just happened, and... His words were white noise to Rosa. She stood up abruptly, her chair scraping against the floor. A mistake, she echoed her voice trembling with anger. You call an affair with my sister a mistake? I know, I know it's unforgivable, Samuel pleaded, his voice laced with desperation. But please, we can work through this. I love you, Rosa. The words I love you from him now felt like an insult. Rosa's heart, once so full of love for this man, felt hollowed out by betrayal. Work through this, she said, her voice rising. There's nothing left to work through, Samuel. You've destroyed everything. She stormed past him, heading to their bedroom to gather her thoughts. 
Samuel followed, his pleas continuing, but they were drowned out by the cacophony of Rose's own thoughts. She felt a clarity amidst the chaos, a resolve forming within her. Returning to the kitchen, she faced Samuel with a steely calm. I want you out, she said firmly. Out of this house, out of my life. I'll be speaking to a lawyer. Samuel's face crumpled, the reality of the situation sinking in. Rosa, please. But Rosa was resolute. It's over, Samuel. You made sure of that. As she watched Samuel pack a bag in a daze, Rosa felt a myriad of emotions, grief for the love and trust lost, anger at the betrayal, and a looming sense of uncertainty about her future. But beneath it all, there was a flicker of something else, a determination to rebuild her life, piece by shattered piece. In the days following Samuel's departure, Rosa's home felt like a mausoleum of memories, each corner a haunting reminder of a life that had crumbled under the weight of betrayal. Yet, amidst the ruins of her trust and love, a fierce determination took root. She had decided to not just let go but to fight back, to seek justice for the wrongs done to her. Rosa's first step was to meet with a lawyer, Ms. Evelyn Hart, known for her tenacity and expertise in family law. As Rosa sat in the sleek, modern office, she recounted her story, her voice steady but her hands betraying her inner turmoil. Ms. Hart listened intently, her expression a blend of empathy and professional detachment. Infidelity cases can be complicated, Rosa, Ms. Hart began, but the evidence you have against your husband, particularly the financial implications of his actions, gives us a strong case. We can pursue substantial compensation for the emotional and psychological damage, as well as any financial losses. Rosa nodded, feeling a sense of empowerment for the first time since her world had fallen apart. I want to go through with it, she said resolutely. It's not just about the money. It's about holding him accountable. As they discussed the legal strategy, Rosa felt a strange mix of emotions. There was fear, certainly, at the prospect of a public and potentially messy legal battle. But overriding that was a sense of righteousness, a belief that justice needed to be served. The first court hearing was a surreal experience for Rosa. The courtroom was packed not just with legal professionals but also with journalists who had caught wind of the scandalous case. Samuel was there, looking visibly shaken, his usual confident demeanor replaced by a sense of defeat. As the proceedings began, Rosa's lawyer presented the evidence with clinical precision. The photos, the messages, the financial records of Samuel's expenditures on his affair each piece adding weight to their case. Samuel's lawyer tried to downplay the situation, citing it as a personal matter that had been blown out of proportion. But the public's interest was already piqued. By the time the hearing ended, the story had been picked up by various media outlets. Headlines screamed about the high-profile executive caught in an affair with his wife's sister and the wife who was courageously taking a stand against him. Samuel's world, much like Rosa's, was unraveling. But unlike Rosa, he found no solace or strength in his plight. His reputation was tarnishing by the minute, friends and colleagues distancing themselves as the scandal grew. For Rosa, the media attention was overwhelming but also strangely validating. She was no longer the silent victim of her husband's infidelity. She was a woman demanding justice and refusing to be silenced. Each day brought new challenges, new emotions to grapple with. But as Rosa lay in bed each night, going over the day's events, she felt a growing sense of conviction. She was fighting not just for herself, but for every person who had ever been wronged in such a profound way. The legal battle was just beginning, but Rosa was ready. She had found her strength in her resolve to fight back, 
and she would see this through, no matter what it took. As the legal battle intensified, so did the public interest in Rosa and Samuel's case. The affair, once a private agony, had become a spectacle for the world to see. Rosa, who had sought justice, found herself thrust into a glaring spotlight that illuminated every aspect of her personal life. The media frenzy was unrelenting. Cameras flashed outside the courtroom, reporters hounded her for statements, and her once quiet social media profiles were now bombarded with messages of both support and unwarranted criticism. The story of the high-profile executive, Samuel, caught in an affair with his wife's sister, and the subsequent legal battle, was fodder for every news outlet. Rosa found the attention suffocating. She had wanted to make Samuel accountable, but the public scrutiny was a price she hadn't fully anticipated. Her every move, every appearance in court, was analyzed and discussed. She clung to her privacy fiercely, giving only necessary statements through her lawyer. Meanwhile, Samuel's life was unraveling under the weight of public judgment. His once impeccable reputation was now tainted with the mark of a betrayer. His professional life suffered as clients and partners distanced themselves. Friends who had once been close were now conspicuously absent. The man who had walked with such confidence was now a shadow of his former self, hounded by the media and shunned by those he knew. Amidst this chaos, Rosa struggled to maintain a sense of normalcy. She threw herself into her work, finding solace in the routine and the challenges it presented. It was a welcome distraction from the legal and media circus her life had become. Each court session was a battleground, with revelations and accusations flying from both sides. Rosa's lawyer, Ms. Hart, was relentless, unveiling layers of Samuel's deceit and the impact it had on Rosa's life. Samuel's defense tried to portray the affair as a momentary lapse in judgment, but the evidence spoke louder. The public opinion was divided. Many sympathized with Rosa, seeing her as a symbol of strength and resilience in the face of betrayal. Others criticized her for airing private matters so publicly. Rosa found herself scrutinized not just as a wronged wife but as a woman who dared to challenge her husband so openly. Rosa's relationship with her sister, the other party in this scandal, was another source of public intrigue. The bond they once shared was shattered beyond repair. Rosa's pain was compounded by the loss of her sister, a betrayal that cut deeper than Samuel's. There were no public confrontations just a silent agreement to remain estranged. As the case dragged on, the initial rush of empowerment Rosa had felt was now mingled with exhaustion. The fight for justice was taking its toll. Yet, she refused to back down. This was about more than just her and Samuel, it was about standing up against betrayal and fighting for what was right. The chapter closes with Rosa bracing herself for another court appearance, a mix of determination and weariness in her eyes. The legal battle was far from over, and the public's gaze was unyielding. But Rosa had found an inner strength she never knew she had, a resolve to see this through to the end, no matter the cost. In the wake of the public scandal and ongoing legal battle, Samuel's life entered a downward spiral from which there seemed no escape. His once unshakable confidence had crumbled under the weight of his actions and their consequences. Each day brought a new headline, a new wave of public disdain, and a further fall from the grace he had once enjoyed. Samuel's professional life, which had been the bedrock of his identity, was now in ruins. The company he had dedicated years to, building a reputation as a sharp and successful executive, had distanced itself from him, leading to his eventual resignation under a cloud of disgrace. His network, once a source of pride and support, had disintegrated. Colleagues and acquaintances, wary of being associated with his tarnished image, turned their backs, 
leaving Samuel to face his downfall alone. The isolation extended to his personal life as well. Friends who had once filled his social calendar with invitations now shunned him, making it clear that his presence was no longer welcome. The vibrant social life he had led was replaced by solitary nights in a small apartment, a stark contrast to the life he had known in the home he shared with Rosa. Meanwhile, Rosa continued her relentless pursuit of justice. Her strength in the courtroom, her unyielding determination to hold Samuel accountable, only served to deepen his sense of loss and regret. He found himself replaying their last conversations, her words echoing in his mind, a reminder of the life he had destroyed through his own indiscretions. The media, ever hungry for the next chapter in the scandal, continued to follow Samuel's every move. His fall from grace was a story that captivated the public, a tale of betrayal and downfall that served as a cautionary tale. The coverage was relentless, each report a further blow to his already shattered ego. In the midst of this turmoil, Samuel found himself reflecting on his past, on the decisions that had led him to this point. He thought of Rosa, of the pain he had caused her, and of the love they had once shared. He remembered the good times, the laughter and the dreams they had built together, now all tainted by his betrayal. He also thought of Rosa's sister, the other participant in his downfall. What had started as a reckless flirtation had spiraled into an affair that had destroyed his marriage and fractured a family. The guilt he felt was overwhelming, a constant companion in his solitary existence. As the legal proceedings drew on, Samuel's despair deepened. He was losing everything his career, his reputation, his friends, and most painfully, the woman he now realized he had truly loved. His attempts to reach out to Rosa were met with cold rejection. She had moved on, her focus solely on the legal battle and rebuilding her life. The chapter closes with Samuel sitting alone in his apartment, the walls closing in around him. The life he had known was gone, replaced by a reality filled with regret and solitude. The consequences of his actions were inescapable a daily reminder of the cost of betrayal. The once proud and successful Samuel was now a broken man, facing a future filled with uncertainty and remorse. The final chapter of Rosa and Samuel's tumultuous story began in the solemn ambience of the courtroom, where months of legal battles were culminating into a decisive resolution. Rosa sat with a composed demeanor, her eyes reflecting a journey of pain, resilience, and empowerment. Across the room, Samuel appeared a mere shadow of his former self, his posture deflated, his gaze fixed on some unseen point of regret. As the judge delivered the final ruling, Rosa felt a complex wave of emotions. She was awarded substantial compensation, a recognition of the emotional and financial damages she had endured. The verdict was more than just a legal triumph. It was a vindication of her stand against betrayal and injustice. For Samuel, the judgment was the final nail in the coffin of his old life. The legal defeat was not just a financial blow, it was a public affirmation of his wrongdoing. He had lost everything his career, his reputation, and most painfully, the woman he had loved and the family they had dreamed of building together. In the days following the verdict, Rosa grappled with a mix of relief and exhaustion. The fight had been long and draining, but she had emerged victorious, a testament to her strength and determination. Yet, the victory was bittersweet. It had come at the cost of a marriage she once cherished, a relationship with her sister that was forever broken, and a private pain that had been exposed to the world. Rosa's journey of healing was just beginning. She devoted her time to rebuilding her life, finding solace in her work, and the support of friends who had stood by her. The public interest in her story gradually waned, giving her the privacy she longed for to heal and move forward. For Samuel, 
The aftermath of the trial was a period of profound introspection and loneliness. He was forced to confront the consequences of his actions, to live with the guilt and the realization of what he had lost. His attempts to reach out to Rosa were met with a firm resolution. She had closed that chapter of her life, leaving him to face his future alone. The chapter, and the story, concludes with Rosa standing by the window of her home, looking out at the city. She had come a long way from the woman who had been shattered by betrayal. The journey had been painful, but it had also been transformative. She had found an inner strength she never knew she possessed, a resilience that had carried her through the darkest times. As for Samuel, he is seen in a quiet park, sitting alone on a bench. The scene is reflective, a man coming to terms with the consequences of his choices. The vibrant life he once led was a distant memory, replaced by a quieter, more introspective existence. In the end, Rosa and Samuel's story is a poignant tale of love, betrayal, and the enduring human spirit. It's a reminder that the choices we make have profound effects on our lives and the lives of those around us. The story leaves readers with a sense of closure, yet also a contemplation of the complexities of human relationships and the unpredictable journey of life. My husband became violent towards me after discovering my infidelity, leading to my homelessness and subsequent refuge in a women's shelter. The fluorescent lights of the shelter flickered, casting an eerie glow over the sparse room. In the corner, on a worn-out cot, lay Camila, her gaze fixed on a small crack in the ceiling. Each line seemed to echo the fractures in her own life, a once picture-perfect existence now shattered beyond recognition. Her thoughts drifted, unbidden, to the events that had led her here, to this moment of desolation. It had all started with a seemingly innocent friendship with a colleague, David. Camila had never intended for it to become anything more. But as they spent more time together, what began as casual coffee breaks gradually evolved into intimate conversations, shared secrets, and eventually, stolen moments. She knew it was wrong, but the thrill of the affair clouded her judgment, blinding her to the consequences. Then came that fateful evening when Sebastian, her husband of seven years, discovered the truth. The memory of his reaction was still vivid in her mind, like a nightmare that refused to end. Sebastian, always the gentle and loving partner, transformed in an instant into a visage of rage and betrayal. His outburst had been violent and explosive, a stark contrast to the man she thought she knew. In his eyes, she saw not only anger but also a deep, cutting pain, the kind that could only be inflicted by a loved one's betrayal. The physical altercation that followed was brief but intense, leaving both of them shaken and Camila bruised, both physically and emotionally. She had never seen Sebastian like that, never imagined he could be capable of such violence. And yet, there it was the irrefutable evidence of the harm they had inflicted on each other. In the aftermath, as the reality of what had happened sunk in, Camila realized she could no longer stay. She left their home that night, driven more by fear and confusion than a clear plan. With nowhere else to go, she found herself at the doorstep of a women's shelter, her pride swallowed by necessity. Now, as she lay there, the weight of her choices pressed heavily upon her. She thought about the affair, about how meaningless it seemed in hindsight. Guilt gnawed at her, not just for the betrayal but for provoking a side of Sebastian she never knew existed. Was she to blame for his violent outburst? Could she have prevented it? These questions haunted her, offering no easy answers. Around her, the shelter was quiet, save for the soft, rhythmic breathing of other women, each with their own stories of hardship and survival. Camila felt a kinship with them, yet also a deep sense of isolation. They shared the bond of being outcasts, yet each was alone with her own regrets. 
As the night wore on, Camila's thoughts wandered to the life she had left behind a comfortable home, a loving husband, a sense of security. All of it was gone now, replaced by uncertainty and fear. She wondered if Sebastian was thinking about her, if he regretted his actions as much as she regretted hers. But as dawn began to break, painting the sky with hues of orange and pink, Camila realized that some things, once broken, could never be fully mended. Her affair had set in motion a chain of events that had led to this moment, and there was no going back. The future was a blank canvas, daunting in its emptiness. As she closed her eyes, trying to find solace in sleep, one thing was clear the road ahead would be long and fraught with challenges. But for now, all she could do was face each day as it came, one painful step at a time. Camila woke to the sound of soft murmurs and the rustle of movement. The shelter was waking up, its inhabitants starting another day in their transient lives. She sat up, rubbing the sleep from her eyes, feeling the stiffness of her body from the unforgiving cot. The room, filled with rows of similar beds, was a stark reminder of her new reality. As she made her way to the communal bathroom, she passed faces, each marked by their own tales of hardship. Some avoided eye contact, lost in their own worlds, while others offered a faint, knowing smile. In this place, privacy was a luxury, and Camila felt the weight of so many eyes, each carrying their judgments and sympathies. Breakfast was a simple affair, cereal, toast, and coffee, served in a small dining area. Camila found a spot at the end of a long table, keeping to herself. Around her, conversations ebbed and flowed, snippets of life stories shared over steaming cups of coffee. She listened, her heart aching with the resonance of shared pain. Each woman here had faced her demons, Camila was just beginning to confront hers. Later that morning, she attended a group counseling session, a daily routine in the shelter. A circle of chairs filled a small room, and as she took her seat, she felt a knot of anxiety in her stomach. One by one, the women shared their stories. When it was Camila's turn, she hesitated, her voice barely a whisper as she recounted the events that brought her here. The words felt foreign, as if she were talking about someone else's life. As she spoke, she felt the eyes of the other women on her their expressions a mix of empathy and curiosity. When she finished, there was a moment of silence, heavy with unspoken understanding. Then, an older woman named Mariana spoke up. Her story was one of decades of abuse, a tale of resilience in the face of unimaginable pain. Camila listened, feeling both humbled and inspired by her strength. The session ended with a sense of camaraderie, a bond forged in the fires of shared suffering. Camila realized that she was not alone in her journey, these women, each battling their own demons, were her companions on this path of healing and recovery. In the afternoon, Camila visited the shelter's resource center, where staff members offered assistance with legal advice, job searches, and housing applications. She felt overwhelmed by the bureaucracy, the endless forms and procedures. Her life, once defined by routine and certainty, had become a maze of uncertainty and confusion. That evening, as she lay in her bed, Camila's thoughts turned to Sebastian. She wondered where he was, what he was doing. Did he miss her? Did he regret his actions? Or had he moved on, erasing her from his life as easily as one wipes away a smudge on a mirror. Sleep came uneasily, filled with restless dreams of the life she once knew. Camila realized that this was more than just a physical journey, it was a journey of the soul. She was not just seeking a new home, she was seeking redemption, a way to forgive herself and to find peace in the chaos of her shattered world. As the darkness enveloped her, Camila made a silent vow. 
She would not let this experience define her. She would rise from these ashes, scarred but stronger. This was not the end of her story. It was just a painful chapter in a life that was still being written. Sebastian sat alone in the dimly lit living room, the silence around him a stark contrast to the chaos that had unfolded here just weeks ago. The shadows seemed to mock him, reminding him of the love and laughter that once filled this space. Now, all that remained were echoes of a past he could no longer return to. He picked up a photo frame from the coffee table, the glass cracked in the corner, a casualty of that fateful night. It was a picture of him and Camila, smiling at a friend's wedding. They had looked so happy, so in love. Now, looking at Camila's face, he felt a pang of guilt so intense it took his breath away. Sebastian had always prided himself on being a calm and reasonable man, but the revelation of Camila's affair had shattered his self-image. He had reacted in a way he never thought possible, succumbing to a blind rage that now haunted him day and night. He couldn't shake the memory of his own hands, the violence they had inflicted. It was as if he had been possessed by a stranger, a version of himself he didn't recognize and couldn't reconcile with. The days since Camila left were a blur of confusion and remorse. He had tried to reach out to her, to apologize, to explain, but she had vanished, leaving no trace behind. He didn't even know if she was safe, if she had somewhere to go. The uncertainty gnawed at him, a constant reminder of the consequences of his actions. Sebastian's thoughts were interrupted by the sound of his phone ringing. He glanced at the screen, it was his sister, Anna. He hesitated for a moment before answering, not sure if he was ready to face another person's judgment. Sebastian, how are you holding up? Anna's voice was laced with concern, a soothing balm to his turbulent emotions. I'm managing, he replied, his voice barely above a whisper. Have you heard from Camila? she asked tentatively. No, nothing, he said, feeling a lump form in his throat. The conversation was brief, filled with awkward pauses and unspoken words. Anna offered her support, but Sebastian knew there was little she or anyone else could do to mend what was broken. After the call, Sebastian wandered through the house, each room a reminder of the life he and Camila had built together. Their bedroom, once a sanctuary of intimacy and comfort, now felt cold and impersonal. He noticed Camila's things, still scattered around, a book on the nightstand, her perfume on the dresser. They were like ghosts, remnants of a presence that was no longer there. That night, as he lay in bed, Sebastian's mind raced with questions that had no answers. Could he have done something differently? Was there a moment, a turning point, where he could have saved their marriage? The weight of his guilt was suffocating, a heavy cloak that he couldn't shed. In the darkness, Sebastian realized that his life had irrevocably changed. The man he thought he was, the life he thought he had, were both illusions, now shattered beyond repair. He was left with a haunting question, who was he without Camila? And as the night stretched on, the question remained unanswered, a riddle that echoed in the silence of the empty house. The city park was bustling with life, a stark contrast to the turmoil within Camila. She wandered aimlessly among the paths, her thoughts a tumultuous sea of memories and regrets. The sun was warm, but she felt a chill that seemed to seep into her bones, a reminder of the cold reality she now faced. As she walked, her eyes caught a familiar figure sitting on a bench. Her heart skipped a beat. It was Sebastian. He was staring into the distance, a look of deep contemplation on his face. For a moment, Camila considered turning back, escaping before he noticed her. But something, perhaps a need for closure or a lingering thread of connection, held her feet in place. Sebastian looked up, 
and their eyes met. Time seemed to stand still as a multitude of emotions passed between them in a silent exchange. Camila took a deep breath and approached, her mind racing with a thousand things she wanted to say. Sebastian, she began, her voice barely audible. Camila, he replied, his voice tinged with a mix of surprise and something else she couldn't quite place. They sat in silence, the words they needed to say stuck in their throats. Around them, the world continued its hustle, oblivious to the quiet drama unfolding on the bench. Finally, Sebastian spoke. I've been looking for you. I wanted to, to apologize. His words hung in the air, heavy with meaning. Camila felt a surge of emotions, anger, relief, sadness. But overriding them all was a profound sense of loss. I know you're sorry, she said softly. But that doesn't change what happened. It doesn't change how things ended. Sebastian nodded, his eyes downcast. I know. I just. I wish I could turn back time. I wish I had handled things differently. The conversation that followed was a delicate dance of words, each trying to navigate the complexities of their shared past without causing further hurt. They spoke of the affair, of the night that had changed everything, of the pain and betrayal they both felt. As they talked, Camila realized how much she had missed Sebastian, not just the man she had married, but the friend he had been. And yet, she knew that the chasm between them was too wide to bridge. Too much had happened, too much had been broken. As the sun began to set, casting long shadows on the ground, Sebastian reached out his hand, hesitating for a moment before placing it over hers. It was a simple gesture, but it spoke volumes. I'll always care about you, Camila, he said quietly. No matter where life takes us. Camila felt a tear roll down her cheek, a bittersweet acknowledgement of what they had lost. She squeezed his hand gently, a silent thank you for the years they had shared, for the good times that were now just memories. They parted ways as the sky turned a deep shade of orange, each stepping back into their separate lives. The encounter had been brief, but it had given them both something they desperately needed a chance to say goodbye, not just to each other, but to the life they had once dreamed of building together. As Camila walked away, she felt a sense of closure, however incomplete. Their story had ended, but her journey was still ongoing. She knew the road ahead would be difficult, but for the first time in a long time, she felt a flicker of hope, a belief that maybe, just maybe, she could find her way again. The days melded into one another, each indistinguishable from the last, as Camila navigated her new life with a stoic resignation. The shelter had become both her sanctuary and her prison, a constant reminder of everything she had lost. Each morning, she woke to the sound of others stirring, their movements a symphony of shared struggles and silent resilience. Camila spent her days attending workshops and counseling sessions, trying to piece together the fragments of her broken life. The staff at the shelter were kind, but their words often felt like band-aids on a wound too deep to heal. She found some solace in volunteering at the shelter, helping others who were in situations similar to her own. It was a small distraction from the relentless tide of her own thoughts. One afternoon, while organizing donated clothes, Camila received a call. It was from a friend she hadn't spoken to in months, someone from her old life. The conversation was awkward, filled with cautious pleasantries and unspoken questions. Her friend mentioned Sebastian hinting that he was struggling to cope with the aftermath of their separation. Camila's heart clenched at the mention of his name, but she offered no response, her own pain still too raw. Meanwhile, Sebastian found himself in a downward spiral, his days and nights blurring into a gray haze. 
The empty house was a constant echo of Camila's absence. He threw himself into work, trying to drown out the memories that haunted him at every turn. But the silence always returned, louder and more oppressive with each passing day. He tried dating, a feeble attempt to fill the void Camila had left, but each encounter left him feeling more hollow. The realization that he was searching for something that no longer existed was a bitter pill to swallow. Sebastian knew he had lost more than just a wife, he had lost a part of himself, a part he feared he would never regain. As the season changed, so did the landscape of Camila's life. The shelter, once a place of refuge, began to feel suffocating. She knew she couldn't stay there forever, but the thought of leaving, of facing the world alone, filled her with a paralyzing fear. Her dreams were still haunted by memories of Sebastian, of the life they had once shared. She woke each morning to the stark reality of her loneliness. One evening, as she lay in bed, staring at the ceiling, Camila allowed herself to think about the future. It was a blank canvas, an expanse of uncertainty that stretched out before her. She wondered if she would ever find peace, if she would ever be able to forgive herself for the choices she had made. In his own home, Sebastian faced a similar night of introspection. The realization that life would never return to what it once was hit him with an overwhelming sense of finality. He understood now that some things, once broken, can never be fully repaired. The man he was with Camila, the life they had built, were gone, leaving behind a void that could not be filled. As the night deepened, Camila and Sebastian, each in their own world of solitude, came to a silent acceptance of their reality. Their story had ended, not with reconciliation or redemption, but with a quiet resignation to the paths they had chosen. They were survivors, forever altered by the choices they had made, walking parallel roads that would never meet again. The dawn broke on a new day, bringing with it a fragile hope, a whisper of the strength they would need to carry on, each in their own way, each on their own journey.